The Mercedes-Benz W193 is a two-seat roadster coupe, introduced at the 1963 Geneva Motor Show, and produced from 1963 through 1971. It replaced both the 300 SL, W198, and the 190 SL, W121B2, of the 48,912 W113 SLs produced, 19,440 were sold in the US. The W113 SL was developed under the auspices of Mercedes-Benz technical director Fritz Nollinger, chief engineer Rudolf Ullenhout and head of styling Friedrich Geiger. The lead designer was Paul Brack, who created its patented, slightly concave hardtop, which inspired the Pagoda nickname. All models were equipped with an inline six-cylinder engine with multi-port fuel injection. The bonnet, boot lid, door skins and tonneau cover were made of aluminum to reduce weight. The comparatively short and wide chassis, combined with an excellent suspension, powerful brakes and radial tires gave the W113 superb handling for its time. The styling of the front, with its characteristic upright Bosch, fishbowl, headlights and simple chrome grille, dominated by the large three-pointed star in the nose panel, paid homage to the 300 SL Roadster. W113 SLs were typically configured as a coupe roadster, with a soft top and an optional removable hardtop. A 22 was introduced with the 250 SL California Coupe, which had a fold-down rear bench seat instead of the soft top. By 1955, Mercedes-Benz technical director Professor Fritz Nollinger and his team held no illusions regarding the 190 SL's lack of performance, while the high price tag of the legendary 300 SL supercar kept it elusive for all but the most affluent buyers. Thus, Mercedes-Benz started evolving the 190 SL on a new platform, model code W127, with a fuel-injected 2.2-liter M127 inline-six engine, internally denoted as 220SL. Encouraged by positive test results, Nollinger proposed that the 220SL be placed in the Mercedes-Benz program, with production commencing in July 1957. However, while technical difficulties kept postponing the production start of the W2303, the emerging new S-Class W112 platform introduced novel body manufacturing technology altogether. So in 1960, Nollinger eventually proposed to develop a completely new 220SL design, based on the Fintail W111 sedan platform with its chassis shortened by 30 cm and technology from the W112. This led to the W113 platform, with an improved fuel-injected 2.3-liter M127 inline-six engine and the distinctive Pagoda hardtop roof, designated as 230SL. The 230SL made its debut at the Geneva Motor Show in March 1963, where Nollinger introduced it as follows. It was our aim to create a very safe and fast sports car with high performance, which despite its sports characteristics, provides a very high degree of traveling comfort. The W113 was the first sports car with a safety body, based on Bella Barini's extensive work on vehicle safety. It had a rigid passenger cell and designated crumple zones with impact-absorbing front and rear sections built into the vehicle structure. The interior was rounded, with all hard corners and edges removed, as in the W111 sedan. The W113 was also the first Mercedes-Benz with radial tires, production of the 230SL commenced in June 1963 and ended on the 5th of January 83-13. Its chassis was based on the W111 sedan platform, with a reduced wheelbase by 30 cm, 11.8 inches, recirculating ball steering, with optional power steering, double wishbone front suspension and an independent single joint, low pivot swing rear axle with transverse compensator spring. The dual-circuit brake system had front disc brakes and power-assisted rear drum brakes. The 230SL was offered with a four-speed manual transmission, or an optional, very responsive fluid-coupled, no-torque converter, four-speed automatic transmission, which was popular for US models. From May 1966, the ZFS5-20 five-speed manual transmission was available as an additional option, which was particularly popular in Italy. Of the 19,831 230SLs produced, less than a quarter were sold in the US. The two, 9.33 cubic centimeters, 2.3L, M127, two inline-six engine with 150 PS, 110 kilowatt, 
148 horsepower, and 196 newton meters, 145 pound foot. Torque was based on Mercedes Benz Venerable M180 inline six with four main bearings and mechanical Bosch multi port fuel injection. Mercedes Benz made a number of modifications to boost its power, including increasing displacement from 2,197 cubic centimeters, 2.2 L, and using a completely new cylinder head with a higher compression ratio, 9.3 versus 8.7, enlarged valves and a modified camshaft. A fuel injection pump with six plungers instead of two was fitted, which allowed placing the nozzles in the cylinder head and shooting the fuel through the intake manifold and open valves directly into the combustion chambers. An optional oil water heat exchanger was also available. Mercedes-Benz chief engineer Rudolf Ullenhout demonstrated the capabilities of the 230SL on the tight three-quarter mile Animas Vetras Munthu racetrack in 1963, where he put up a best lap time of 47.5 seconds versus 47.3 seconds by Grand Prix driver Mike Parks on his 3-liter V12 Ferrari 250GT. The 250SL was introduced at the 1967 Geneva Motor Show. Production had already commenced in December 1966 and ended in January 1968. The short one-year production run makes the 1963 SL the rarest of the W113 series cars. The 250 SL retained the stiffer suspension and sportier feel of the early SLs, but provided improved agility with a new engine and rear disc brakes. Range also improved with increased fuel tank capacity from 65 liters, 17.2 US gallons, to 82 liters, 21.7 US gallons. Like its predecessor, the 250 SL was offered with a 4-speed automatic transmission and 4-speed or ZF 5-speed manual transmissions. For the first time, an optional limited slip differential was also available. Of the 5,196 250 SLs produced, more than a third were sold in the US. The main change was the use of the 2,496 cubic centimeters, 2.5 liters, M129.2 engine with 6 millimeters, 12.93 inches increased stroke, 2 millimeters, 0.1 inches increased valve ports, and 7 main bearings instead of 4. The nominal maximum power remained unchanged at 150 PS, 110 kilowatt, 148 horsepower, but torque improved from 145 pound-foot, 197 newton meters, to 159 pound-foot, 216 newton meters. Resiliency also improved with a new cooling water tank, round top, with increased capacity from 10.8 liters, 2.9 US gallons, to 12.9 liters. 3.4 US gallons, and a standard oil water heat exchanger. The wider power band of the 250 SL resulted in noticeably improved performance, as the 230 SL engines rarely produced more than 143 PS, 105 kilowatt, 141 horsepower, in practice. The 250 SL also marked the introduction of a 2-2 body style, the so-called California Coupe, which had only the removable hardtop and no soft top. A small fold-down rear bench seat replaced the soft top well between passenger compartment and boot. In August 1967, a number of additional changes were incorporated to accommodate stricter safety regulations and U.S. emission laws. The safety improvements included a collapsible steering wheel and padded wheel hub, concave control knobs, elastic black rubber heater levers, instead of rigid colored translucent plastic, and softer, rounded dash top padding. Door handles, locks, and window cranks were modernized and less protruding, the door pockets were elastic, the rear view mirror frame was black plastic instead of chrome, and the side view mirrors became more angular. Essentially, the 1967-250-SL retained the more classic, chrome, interior of the 230SL, whereas the 1968-250-SL introduced the modernized, safety, interior of the 280 SL. US models acquired side reflectors on the fenders, Kangol three-point seatbelts, an illuminated automatic gearbox shift quadrant, and emission control equipment. The chrome horn ring was changed to matte finish. The 280 SL was introduced in December 8853 and continued in production through the 23rd of February 1971, when the W113 was replaced by the entirely new and substantially heavier R107, 350SL. Over the years, the W113 evolved from a sports car into a comfortable grand tourer, 
and U.S. models were by then usually equipped with the four-speed automatic transmission and air conditioning. Manual transmission models came with the standard four-speed or the optional ZF5 speed, which was ordered only 882 times and thus is a highly sought-after original option today. In Europe, manual transmissions without air conditioning were still the predominant choice. Of the 23,885-280 SLs produced, more than half were sold in the U.S. The main change was an upgrade to the 2,300, 23 cubic centimeters, 2,189 liters, M130 engine with 170 PS, 125 kilowatt, 168 horsepower, maximum power and 180 pound-foot, 244 newton meters, maximum torque, which finally gave the W33 adequate power. The performance improvement was achieved by increasing bore by 4.5 millimeters, 0.2 inches, which stretched the limits of the M180 block, and required pairwise cylinder casts without cooling water passages. This mandated an oil cooler, which was fitted vertically next to the radiator. Each engine was now bench tested for two hours prior to being fitted, so their power specification was guaranteed at last. The M130 marked the final evolution of Mercedes-Benz, venerable SOHC M180 inline 6, before it was superseded by the entirely new DOHC M110 inline 6 introduced with R107 1974 European 280 SL models. For some time, it was also used in the W109300 S class, where it retired the expensive 3 liter M189 alloy inline 6. North American models have a number of subtle differences, the most obvious one being the distinctive, sealed beam, bulb headlights required in the US versus the Bosch Lichtenheit headlights for the rest of the world. 1970 US models also acquired amber turn signal lenses on the rear lights, later than most other countries. Other differences of the North American models include imperial gauges, chrome bumper guards, side reflectors, illuminated from 1970, lower rear axle ratios for faster acceleration yet lower top speeds, and no, single side, parking lights. US market 280 SL engines required emission control modifications, including, softer, valve timings, a reduced compression ratio and a modified injection pump, which reduced power from 170 PS, 125 kilowatt, 168 horsepower, to 160 PS, 118 kilowatt, 158 horsepower, in the US, automatic transmission, air conditioning, and white wall tires were much more popular than elsewhere. European cars were popular as US grey market imports. Those vehicles were brought to the US some years after their original delivery in Europe. Early European imports had aftermarket hazard lights and Kangol seatbelts fitted, US safety requirements that were adopted in Europe only in later production years. While the original design by Paul Brack is highly regarded today, it was more controversial at the time of its introduction. So in 1963, Pininfarina asked the Mercedes-Benz board to produce its own custom-bodied version of the 230 SL. Pininfarina's Tom Tiarda turned the Roadster into a fixed-head coupe that vaguely resembled the Ferrari 250 GT Lusso. He retained the grille and headlamps of the original, but raked the grille more sharply, sculpted the wings, and made the sides more bulbous and thus wider, while making the bonnet narrower and shorter. The rear was reminiscent of the Ferrari 330 GT22, also a Tiarda design, but without taking away the distinctive personality of the 230 SL. Inside, Tiarda left the dashboard unchanged, but the interior as a whole exuded the stamp of elegant Italian handcraftsmanship. The result was appealing but not convincing enough to go into production and remained a one-off, subsequently acquired by German press Baron Axel Springer. Mercedes-Benz chief engineer Rudolf Ullenhout liked pushing the power envelope of his cars. In 1965, he fitted a 250 SL with the massive 6,332 cubic centimeters, 6.3 liter, 250 PS, 184 kilowatt, 247 horsepower, M100 V8 engine from the Mercedes-Benz 600. This engine conversion gave the car, denoted as W11312, impressive power, but made it very front-heavy, so that this direction was abandoned. The car was eventually destroyed, the usual procedure for test vehicles at the time. In 1966, the Turin coachbuilder Pietro Frua, a prominent car designer in Italy in the 1960s, presented a coach-built 230 SLX shooting brake version of the 230 SL. 
In 1968, Mercedes-Benz fitted a 973 SL with a 206 PS, 152 kilowatt, 203 horsepower, M50F Wankel engine, denoted as R113W33-29, with a top speed of 205.1 km per hour, 127.4 miles per hour, a 0 to 60 miles per hour, 97 km per hour, acceleration time of 8.7 seconds, and almost inaudible compared to regular SLs, it provided quite a surprise encounter for their owners in southern Germany at the time. In 1963, Eugen Boringer won the 6,600 km Spa Sofia Liege Rally, Belgium to Bulgaria, on a race modified 1963-230 SL. This vehicle was thought to have been destroyed for a long time, but turned up at a collector's house a few years ago. A newly built replica is now in the permanent collection of the Mercedes-Benz Museum in Stuttgart Unterkirchheim, Germany. On the 14th of September 1963, Dutch Grand Prix racer Karel Godin de Beaufort took second place in class in the Balls Hill Climb in a stock 230SL. In 1964, Mercedes-Benz entered a modified 230SL for Eugen Boringer, Klaus Kaiser into the Spa Sophia Liege Rally. These car had special 2.6-liter engine, probably with pairwise cylinder casts, a layout that was later adopted for M130 engine of the 280SL. The 230SL from the previous year was driven by Dieter Glemser, Martin Bromgaard, but did not finish. Also entered two W111-220SE limousines for Yui Rosquist, Manfred Schick, who comes sixth and Rolf Kreider, Alfred Kling, who did not finish. Due to considerable mechanical bad luck, Eugen Boringer finished only third this time, after Rauno Altonen on Austin Healy 3000 and Eric Carlson on Saab. In 1965, Dieter Glemser entered the Acropolis Rally on a lightweight 230SL similar to the Spa Sofia Liege cars. His tuned 2.3-liter engine produced 152 PS, 112 kilowatt, 150 horsepower, further evidence to the fact that 230SL production engines rarely met their power specification. Unfortunately, Glemser was given wrong directions by the police, costing him his comfortable lead and relegating him to third place on the British automotive TV show Top Gear, Season 3, Episode 8, the 280SL is thought of highly, notably being described by the host at the time, Jeremy Clarkson, as one of the cars from the 1960s that has stood the test of time, being, from a time when Mercedes was still building its cars properly.